This video is brought to you by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. <laughs> Hey, my name is Javi, and we're doing a room tour. I'll be showing you the room that I've been living in, I mean working in, for almost five years. And to answer a question right off the bat, yes, it do smell wild in here. Javi! It's been 1,400 years since you made a toy review, and you come back with a room tour? <laughs> Yes. I don't mind as long as there's a sponsor. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. <coughs> Experience Japan from the comfort of your own home with Tokyo Treat, a monthly Japanese subscription box with up to 20 of the latest, exclusive, and seasonal Japanese candy and snacks. And Sakura Co. is also a monthly Japanese subscription box, but with 20 authentic artisan Japanese snacks and teas from Japan's local snack makers, continuing to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over a hundred years. Plus one special Japanese tableware every month, which is a beautiful Sakura Co. tea glass in this case. Both are delivered straight from Japan to your door. And both boxes have a different theme every month. These are the boxes for me. <laughs> Tokyo Treat's theme is Sakura Starlight Snack Fest. And Sakura Co.'s theme is Moonlit Sakura. Springtime in Japan is almost over, but you can still get a taste of the famous Sakura season. Uh, this month, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. are inviting you to experience Yukura, which is the Japanese tradition of viewing cherry blossoms at night. This beautifully designed Sakura Co. box contains the unique and springtime exclusive flavors of Hana Warabi Mochi, Sakura Ame, and Sakura Sweet Potato. Uh, Ooh, it's so wet. <laughs> and treat! Yourself to some piccola sakura matcha and sakura cherry boucher from Tokyo Tree. And if you're confused as to what any of this is, there's a booklet explaining every snack included in both boxes. Also, both of them have a lot of information on Japanese culture. So check the link in the description and use my code JABI to get $5 off your first Tokyo Treat order and $5 off your first Sakura Co. order. Same code for both links. <laughs> the shit I do for this job. <laughs> to get this started, why don't we start outside, which is something I haven't done in over four months. Ah! Uh -huh. Oh, it burns, it burns. Get this on, get this on, get this on. So the first thing you'll see upon entering my studio is my main desk. Get this sippy juice out of the way here. And this is where I do all my editing, all my streaming, all my gooning. And right above my editing streaming desk, you get my first toy display. These are all of my Transformers Masterpiece G1 slash Beast Wars figures. But as you can see, room is a bit limited, so no Air King, no Metal T-Rex. That's a problem that could be solved with more display space, which I will get. Stay tuned to the end of the video. And if you look throughout the whole perimeter of the room, you you will notice it ain't that big. There's something about this particular angle that makes the studio look a lot bigger than it is, but trust me, this is the door, and immediately you see my desk, and this is the entirety of the room. I'm not really complaining about it. Plenty of room for one person. But when I have my friends over and do my friend streams on Jobby 2, like, um, subscribe, it feels a bit crowded. But before we move on to the casting couch, I'd like to cover the ceiling again. If you look all throughout the ceiling of the room, you can see there's these little pucks up there. Those are actually lights. Completely wireless, but battery operated. Being the lazy bitch that I am, I didn't bother to put any of the batteries for today. But trust me, it looks pretty impressive when the lights are on. Anyway, desk, schizophrenic monitor display, appropriate for me. Turn slightly to the left and you get my printer. Random cabinet in a not so great spot. Not gonna get too deep into my drawers and oh boy, you don't need to see that mess. There's the camera filming myself here. Hello. And if we turn even more to the left, 
Ugh. This setup should look familiar to you. The review desk featuring my slowly degrading background. You remember when this thing was a lovely shade of gray? It's turned as yellow as my father. I'm just kidding. My father brown as hell. This is the large turntable that I've reviewed all of my figures on. It's electronic, so I can just flip on a switch and it'll start spinning very slowly. I speed it up in post. And these paper towels shouldn't even be here. They should be in my gooning area. We have a tripod, which is usually reserved for this camera that I'm holding right now. And this tripod goes in front of the turntable. And this camera simply hooks in. Ah, and now it looks like a jobby review. Swivel here. Beautiful spread. Uh -huh. What is my life coming to? Just uh, don't look under my review desk or else you'll see a certain bag of tricks that uh, totally doesn't contain the disembodied heads of my... Uh... Moving on to this corner. This is where I stack up the figures I use for size comparisons and the main figures themselves. Not the best way to treat figures that are over a hundred dollars. But do you think I care about the value of anything? <laughs> I don't have a god. That pretty much covers the review section of the room. Oh wait, Godzilla shelf. A pathetically small display for such a large character. I just wish I had more room. Wink. Wink. <laughs> Definitely gonna need more room if I want to display that upcoming alien. Review desk. Editing desk. And what the hell is this random thing? <laughs> this is the stand that I use to mount this very camera onto when I'm doing a just playing stream on the second channel. Like, gotta subscribe. Hook it onto here and I'm able to play with the figure on this desk. And with this thing out of the way, you get a clearer look at my PC. The very heart of my operation. Custom built. Not by me. Technically, all I did was buy the components. It was put together by my good friend Miguel, formerly of Bottle Cap Media, formerly known as Young Broken Board. Also, Miguel was formerly alive. I think about him every night. Not gonna go into this thing's specs, this isn't a computer tour after all. It's a good machine, has served me well for many years, and will continue to do so. It's enough to run certain games on my VR headset. Speaking of, if we move on from my PC, you see that I have a VR headset. I don't have the most amount of room to play with it, but I make do. I usually stand right there. Gives me enough room to swing wildly when I'm beating my saber. I love Beat Saber. I play it every day. This table's a mess, by the way. Doesn't usually show up on camera, but when it does, it's for those food review things that I do on the second channel. Like, comment, subscribe. As it is now, it just functions as a charging dock for various devices. And I am struggling to move the camera farther than this. That's only because we're all hooked in here. <laughs> Didn't really quite go into my setup, but if you must know, I have a little thingy on my hip, and that connects to this lovely orange cable that goes right into the ether. So that does allow me a great range of movement. I can move all around the studio, but I am tethered. Makes me feel like an Avangelion. <laughs> oh! And the cable plugs right back into this whole complicated setup. Ah! Anyway, let me free this camera cable here. Ah! Oh, good. Ah. I should be able to move the camera even farther so we can explore the other half of my studio. That's how it's structured into half. One half, you have the review section here. And the other half, we have the hangout section, which consists of the casting couch. It's usually a lot more packed with boxes, but today I only have some spots. Okay? This backpack with nothing notable. This is my gym clothes. I work out in here too. I told you it smelled crazy in here. This lovely but dirty ass rug. Me and the boys have gotten into some adventures in here. The all important recycling bin tells a whole story. Beer, Mountain Dew, and a uh, and a and a, a fat. You remember when they said Mountain Dew makes your dick small? That was so stupid. What's wrong with having a small dick? So I'm just gonna take a seat on the couch now. Ah, very easy to get lost in here and not do any work. I took an hour nap today and I felt so good, but it also felt so pointless. Just like everything I've ever done. Ah! From the couch, we get a good view of my console setup. I have all the fundamentals, a Wii, a PS1, and a Nintendo Switch, which I will abuse the hell out of when Zelda comes out. I'll see you in five years. And just above that, you get the Goji ah! figures, and one of my favorite possessions of the studio, a large monitor. That was way too expensive for what it is. I love it though, and it does look bigger in person.
Again, you have some fuck lights. And above the monitor, you get my Ava setup. Just got my metal builds, my Dine action, which I never reviewed, my real action heroes, which I never reviewed, Figma Asuka, and metal build Ava Unit 2. And a custom made bus by Zero G Props, who also made my Goji figures. And next to that, you get a ridiculously placed air conditioner. Not where I would have put it, but I didn't build this room myself. And above all this, you have my random shelf. This one doesn't really have a theme. It was gonna be third-party movie figures, but then I got the Post Plus Gal Guy Gar, which I never reviewed, and immediately fell in love with it, so I wanted to display it. Took down my unique toys figures and just made this a hybrid movie third-party figure shelf with random Japanese properties. It's a thematic mess, but I think it looks alright. But if I had more display space, I could properly categorize them. That's the Monocrat Megatank, by the way, Dine Action Ultraman, which I never read. The Generator Industry Metal Slug, Post Plus Gal Guy Gar, of course. <laughs> and the Magnificent Mecha MM01. And from there, we're already at our final main component of this room the ever present fan art wall. This is approximately how much you see in all of my videos, but there's a lot more that's there. And not all of it is necessarily jobby fan art, but just some of my favorite artwork that fans have sent me over the years. I'm really happy with the look of this wall, but I I wish it was bigger to include even more fan art. And this void in the center is actually a window, which I keep closed at all times to cover the sound of screaming. I don't know if you knew this, but I, uh, I do that a lot. As small as this room is, a major benefit is that it does a great job at keeping sound in. It's a joke that gets passed around a lot of times, but I have not once gotten a noise complaint from the neighbors. It's always possible that they're just intimidated by my presence. Other than that, uh, we're pretty much done here. <laughs> There's not much more to say about this particular jobby cave. It's less of a cave and more like a coffin that has been tossed into the Bermuda Triangle, sinking deeper and deeper into the depths of the ocean until there will be nothing left but the sound of silent screams. What I'm trying to say is, I've had a good run with this place, but I think it's time for an upgrade. <laughs> And here we have the big room, which I fully intend to move into sometime this year. I just think it would provide a lot more opportunities for content going forward. A dedicated green screen area, more room to film more stupid skits. I know some of you don't like that, but I, I really don't care. And a larger hangout area to make streams more comfortable. With the potential for VR streams, I can't really do that in here. And the thing I consider the most important. More display space for my figures. You don't know how big my collection is, but believe me, it's not just what's in my current studio. However, filling up a space as large as that is not gonna be easy. And not the cheapest. So, by royal decree of the Swivel King, I've decided to open channels memberships for both of my channels. Feel free to read through the perks. I'm sure you'll find what I'm offering interesting. But if you don't want to join the channel, you can always support me on Patreon, which is significantly cheaper, but offers less perks. Or you can drop a super thanks on any of my videos at any time. But let me make something perfectly clear. You do not, absolutely do not, have to support me financially. You will get the content I make for free forever and always. And my move to the big room is gonna happen regardless if I meet my financial goals. However, your financial support will just make it hurt significantly less. Needless to say, I'm coming back. New toy reviews are coming out. I even threw out some polls recently that you could vote on if you're a member or a patron. After an admittedly rough month, don't want to get into it, but let's just say reality kicked me in my ass. I am once again ready to continue being your favorite swivel-loving degenerate. Uh, I'll see you next time. And thank you for your support and your patience. Now, oh, excuse me. I have some uh, important business to attend to. Big Daddy, I don't like to... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. No.